Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I want to share with you guys my final thoughts on the Remet Knives Peacock. This is the blue FRN variant. There are three variations available. There is a black G, uh, black, not G10, <laughs> a black FRN, blue FRN, and a quite fluorescent pink one. Um, I'm mentioning that because this knife was actually extremely easy for my fiance to use, and she's not the biggest fan of liner locks. But after using this knife for the time that I have used it for, um, it's become extremely smooth, well broken in, super, super easy to maneuver and to use. So honestly, I think this would be a pretty nice little, uh, relatively inexpensive, a gift for you know your counterpart or if anybody likes pink you know doesn't matter but the price on these guys is $32.99 and right now at the recording of this video there's a five dollar coupon that you could add to that which is absolutely insane um this is a knife that has so much value in it and i, I i'm so happy that uh, remet formerly known as qygmgs they're going places. And if they can have action on a sub $50 knife that's like this, tolerances like this, um, I just, I couldn't even imagine what they're gonna be capable of once they start doing something in the mid range and maybe in the premium range. So anything over a hundred bucks. Um, so it's very exciting. Some of the stuff that this company is that this company is capable of and is possibly going to be able to offer in the future so i'm not the biggest fan of pulling specs off of amazon because eh, you know, things kind of vary and either way i can't really seem to find measurements and things like that but the least i can do is bring up the weight and show a handful of size comparison knives so we'll do that right now let's do the weight really quick So this does have a full inset steel liners, no milling. So that's something that could have been done to reduce the weight. 3.1 ounces, it's still quite lightweight. And I mean, 3.1 ounces, that's not gonna bring you down by any means. Here off to the side, I have a bunch of size comparison knives, plus one that I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, comparisons to which may actually surprise you. <laughs> so here is my Spyderco PM2. Definitely a lot larger. This is gonna be more of a medium sized knife. I wouldn't say medium because it's still a little bit longer than my Native 5. And two more here, some Benchmades. This is the Osborne 940. Um, it's just a little bit shorter in length than the 940. Have a bug out. It is exactly the same length as a bug out. So that's nice. It's a very popular knife. I'm sure a lot of people own bug outs. Two more here. It's my Demco AD 20.5. Pretty darn close overall in length. Of course, completely different blade shapes. And then CBB Elementum. So it is actually a little bit longer than the CBB Elementum, but um, the cutting edge, actually, you know, it still has more cutting edge than the CBB Elementum. The only downside to this versus the Elementum is that you can sit on that flipper tab area that's not exactly a choil this it's a, it's a little tight right there i mean you could if you really want to risk it i wouldn't but i would like to mention that because a stop pin does um does its thing back over here you could actually cut in a forward finger choil if you decided to do so which i don't think that that would be a bad idea of course um you know, to each their own. I would just leave it as is. Um, this is, uh, as I mentioned before, a knife that has ridiculously good action. And I did have to tune it. Now, uh, this knife, and I was told by the manufacturer that this knife 
was going to come with a one little issue and the detent was going to be really strong, almost uncomfortably strong on some units that were put out there, unfortunately. So they weren't caught before, or I suppose during the QC process, not a big deal at this price point. But you know what? I'm still very thankful that the company is communicating regardless of a language barrier. These are being manufactured in China, overseas. Um, and I have been told that they will be uh, becoming a little bit more stringent on their QC process and lightening the detent overall, which I think is going to make this knife even better than it actually is. So the issue that I had, and if you've seen my unboxing of this, I had one major complaint. The detent, yes, was very strong. Um, it was almost unbearably strong and, you know, for my frail, weak little fingers, right? But um, now, after tuning it, it has no rock, up or down, side to side is solid, there is no detent lash, and uh, if I did experience some pivot movement, it's gone now. So after disassembling, cleaning, uh, tuning, doing my whole process to it, which sounds more fancy and complicated than it actually is. It's it just basic maintenance, and I bent the uh, steel liner out a little bit, not too crazy out. As you can see, it still locks up completely fine, but um, the lock is still not completely on it, but the lock is still perfectly fine. It's not going to if you go and spine whack it, which I did a couple times, it's just a habit that I've gotten into now after the whole button lock fiasco. Um, I spine whack all my <laughs> knives now. <laughs> uh, even when I got my, uh, what was it? The, uh, not the, was it the Vandal? No, it was one of the, uh, it's another knife that I recently got. It was a button lock knife from LTK and uh, <laughs> it's a button lock so I spine whacked it and it's perfectly fine <laughs> but it's just a, it's a habit that I got myself into which is nothing wrong with that um, so the lockup completely fine the action is ridiculously wonderful uh, for the price I'd say that this is a whole lot of knife here taking a look at this blade here I haven't used this a whole lot but I did use this knife a lot for breaking down a good bit of cardboard here in my garage it was just piling up like crazy and the blade material on this is 9CR 18MOV it's nothing fancy nowhere near super steels but it is very responsive to a an expensive little leather strop um, I'm not paid to talk about the little NAFS Co leather strop. It's just a product that I genuinely enjoy ever since I got it. It's just this little leather strop and it comes with a little stick of compound that should essentially last you a lifetime um, unless you have like a bajillion knives and you're constantly stropping it. Um, but this is my little setup for maintaining knives on the go. It's just this with the compound on it pretty heavy and then a little Civivi uh, Torx bit T6, T8 which is what this knife uses. So the pivot is a T8. The body screws and clip screws are T6. Not the biggest fan of T6s, um, but they are machined rather well and the knife was actually extremely easy to take apart. No issues with uh, stripping or uh, cross-threading. I know some, some cheaper, more inexpensive knives, it's easier to cross-thread them even if you are very careful. Um, this did come with a little Allen key that was a T8 and T6 combo Allen key. It uh, it didn't work. <laughs> the T8 worked, but the T6, it just, it's like it wasn't the right size. So I just tossed it. It's, it's not a big deal, but it does fit, you know, the, the one from Civivi just fine. So they bite in just, just fine. So it's T8 right there. Little, little bit of play, nothing crazy. So just be careful with that and then here we have the t6 and they bite in honestly with a whole lot less play which is uh, surprising actually so there's that so um even weha bits i exclusively use 
bunch of Weeha bits and drivers and all this other kind of stuff. So all, all the bits on, on these kits, this is the their micro driver one. These all fit just fine with hardly any play. Um, but yeah, I think that that's something that could definitely be improved over time. But for what you're getting here for the price, this is absolutely incredible. Now, the main issue that I had with this was the, uh, I guess, the right-sided thumb stud. And this is a right-handed individual's dedicated knife because there are no spots milled out for the uh, for a left-hand carry, unfortunately. At this price point, hmm, could have been for this design. Yeah, it could have been. It wouldn't have interrupted any sort of design flow or anything like that. They could have just made a little spot there. Um, this is very reminiscent of Spyderco's multi-directional FRN, and yeah, I think they got it right. If anything, they might have actually done it a little bit uh, too refined. It is very soft. Uh, everything is extremely well-rounded. Um, the multi-directional FRN from Spyderco is a little bit more grabby-grabby, a little bit uh, a little rougher feeling. It's still very comfortable and nice. It doesn't feel like super cheap. I understand that it is a plastic knife, but it doesn't feel like a cheap plastic knife. Neither does this, surprisingly. As soft and how everything is, it still feels quite well finished. It's just a lot lighter than uh, Spyderco's is. But Spyderco has a little pad for the clip to land on, so the uh, pattern doesn't, I suppose, tear up your pant material. Not that I've ever really run into that. But it's a nice little touch that Spyderco does. Here, they, they don't do that. There is no little landing pad for the clip to sit on. So, I mean, again, there's even less excuse to have milled in a little space there. It is inset into the scale. And the little T6 screws are going all the way through to that steel liner down in there so there's that uh, talking a little bit more about this clip it's just a very simple uh, bent steel clip the style of the clip is deep carry but it is not set on the knife to where the knife is going to be deep carry so you're going to have uh, that much sticking out of your pocket nothing crazy i think there's enough to get a hold on and get your hand into a decent position to then engage with that flipper tab which is going to be the uh, the easiest form of deploying this knife but it's pretty darn nice how everything is flush. It's not going to snag underneath there. The only little downside with the clip, the only issue that I, I actually ran into multiple times is if you take a look at this clip, it's uh, very soft how it all comes down. There's no abrupt, like, large bends. So it's very consistent, and then it comes up a little bit. Then it almost looks like it goes flat, but then it comes down. So I have a very difficult time getting this in the pocket sometimes. Um, you could very easily take the clip off, take some pliers and just bend that out a little bit if you really wanted to. Um, it's again, it's a very cheap, inexpensive bent steel clip. It should bend out quite well, but in and out of the pocket, bending that just a hair this thing will be wonderful in and out of the pocket. So I think the retention in the pocket is just fine. Uh, and I don't really think there's a whole lot much more to talk about here at this point. Uh, I already talked about the, the blade material. Um, I did have to tune it a little bit to lighten up that detent and also using a knife too. Like just because you get a knife, and this is something I noticed that I periodically go to White Mountain Knives and they do a lot of sales on returns. So they, they sell knives that are open box or a light detent or heavy detent or a chip on the blade or, a, you know, little, little things like that. They're very common things at the lower price point, even in the higher price point, honestly. But, um, you know, this is a knife that I would say a lot of people would probably return based on how heavy that detent was. But with like five minutes, and a couple little, uh, couple little bits, T6 and a T8, you can disassemble it, flex that lock bar out just a hair, and it becomes one of the nicest actions I've ever felt at this price point. It is absolutely 
insane. And now I can actually um, thumb flick it here. I just have to get it right. So it is very much possible after tuning. Uh, it has definitely become a knife that is extremely comfortable to deploy in essentially all ways. So coming from the factory, they said that they're going to address that strong detent. So if their knives come out anywhere like this from the factory, it, this is going to be a winner. It definitely is. I mean, the way that this thing cuts, and it still has a factory edge again. I've only been using the little leather strop, but it's a wonderful edge. Wonderful blade shape. It's very useful. Nothing crazy. You know, it moves the material just fine. Thick and thin material. Um, this knife is just as good, and I almost forgot about doing the comparison, but this is the Bridgeport Knives 395. Um, today that I'm actually recording this video, um, they're releasing their version 2, which I'm hoping to get one. I don't know when they're going to land because there was no time stamp on when they're going to land. But this is one of the knives in my collection with the most insane action on bearings. A lot of my favorite knives are actually on washers. Um, and then some of the other knives that are in my collection don't have a detent system, actually. Um, but this thing, it is absolutely insane. It's not super, super drop shutty, but it can be. And the lockup is completely solid. Up and down, there's no play anywhere, and it's just... It's so, so smooth. You can't feel anything. And this is well broken in, right? This knife... And it, it took me weeks to get it to be this good of an action this knife i've had for days and the action is almost just as good so i think that is something uh, very impressive to know so, with that being said i think that's pretty much it do i recommend this knife yeah i i do um if you guys want to go ahead and pick it up i'll be linking it down in the description just be wary of the strong detent um, if you guys don't really care about, um, you know, tinkering with your with your knives and you just want them to be pretty perfect right out of the box, I'd say wait a little bit for the second run to drop. Maybe message the manufacturer on Instagram. Um, they're great about communication. They get back to you within 24 hours or so. Um, and, you know, I'm sure they'll have a, a set date or a little bit more information on when the new batch will come out that will be addressing that one little issue honestly so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you guys are subscribed i most definitely appreciate you guys' support and also i want to give a little thanks to people that have been buying stuff from naf sale you guys have been amazing a huge help even people that are just popping in just to ask questions um you know it could also help out with sales and stuff or lead to a sale um and recently i was having a family member with some medical issues that hadn't been working for a couple weeks so all that i've earned within the last um week or so i will be cashing out and giving it to her um i know a lot of people in my family aren't as generous unfortunately but um i was i suppose i was raised a little bit differently so again thank you from me and thank you from her it's going to be a huge help if you guys aren't subscribed go ahead and consider subscribing because i do a lot of unboxings giveaways uh update channel videos uh things like that and it's a, it's a fun time here so with that being said i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day